I am not a Star Wars fan. I did not watch Star Wars as a kid. What gaming chair do you recommend? What's a gaming chair? Hello. How's everybody doing? This is a different stream. Um, just because I've said this a few times and I'll say it again. I do put a lot of pressure on these streams sometimes, and they don't always necessarily need to be so tense for me. You know, I, I get I get a little anxious sometimes on the things I make. Uh, but this is a this is just going to be a very very casual stream. This stream is just going to be an opportunity for us to just sort of break down the barriers a little bit. You know, this is just an opportunity to have like a moment just to chat with the people that come see me. This if if you've got a burning question or a suggestion you really want to get out there. This is just kind of your opportunity. I just wanted to have a moment to just sort of have a streaming slot where I just kind of relax. Just curious, have you read the Percy Jackson books? I haven't. I am not, I am not one for reading. I think school ruined my urge to read, but I changed that. The other day I went in shopping and I bought a handful of books of all types of different things. I can't, they're buried over there. But like, I've got some comics because I, I really wanted to read some comics. Like, I wanted some Miles Morales stuff and some Walking Dead stuff, so I got some comics. Um, I got like a big tutorial book because I, oh, I just liked it. It was like how to digitally draw, basically. And I was like, oh, I could pick that up as a hobby. And then a couple other ones that are a lot more political. I like politics, I guess. Or maybe it's just so relevant I have to read about it. I don't know. But that's what I'm doing. I'm a British critical in terms of dis disheveledness. Well, I'll take that. Not quite as a. Uh, raw as critical, I'll be honest. I filter myself a whole lot more because, I don't know, that's just the kind of guy I am. You know, lived off Nintendo games and made Nintendo content, but eh, I'll take it as a, as a comp- I'll take it to my list of things I've been compared to. Number one was Harry Potter. Number two was Daniel Radcliffe. You think they're one and the same, but they're not. My, my nan, literally, like, ten years after Harry Potter finishes, still says, Oh, you look like Daniel Radcliffe, because Daniel Radcliffe grew a beard as well. And I'm like, all right, thanks, Nan. I'm not Daniel Radcliffe. I'm your grandson. Daz, what is your favorite What is your favorite video you have ever done? Oh, that's a good question. I think, oh, sorry about the, the creaky chair. I think it would be my Let's Play video that is the most fame, the most popular one, which is a blast from the past. Because that in that one, we were playing Pikmin 2, we come to a level, you know the one, everyone always references it all the time. It's uh, a million bulbs, very bad game design in all honesty. But I went around and I punched them all to death and with a, with a Sparta remix montage. And while everyone loves like the moment, it's like a meme in a certain circles of the Pikmin community, Pick. all fun. I enjoyed it a lot. What I really like about it is... For a start, I, I still get messages on it saying this was the first YouTube video I ever watched. And I was like, that's crazy, because that was the first type of YouTube video I ever watched. There was a video in 2008, maybe 2006, of this guy going around beating these people up, I think, with that music. And that video was made as a tribute to them, and I could never find that original video again. So I feel like I've kept a little piece of history of just like... Oh, yeah. I feel like it's probably like a time traveling plot point where it's like, I'm going to go back in time to make that video to inspire young me to make that video because the video doesn't exist anymore. It's just in the Pikmin ether. To me, it was a Pikmin meme when I saw it in 2006. And now it's become a bigger Pikmin meme to the wider Pikmin community when it came out in like 2013. So crazy. What is your favorite color? Uh, I have two. Cyan. It doesn't look good in this lighting, but there it is. Uh, what would we want? We want that one. Cyan and a very specific type of purple. Uh, the purple that's in the Velvet Room in the Persona games. Unless they're blue, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're Velvet, which is purple. Colorblind anyway, so who knows. What's my Smash main? Oh, um, good question. I wanted to be, I want to be that cool guy. I wanted to be a random main. I liked just playing the game, making my best out of everything. Because also, everyone I play with, kind of normies. You know what I mean? No one, no one plays. I played Smash since Melee all my life. So, but if I could choose, if I could, if I could choose one to get really good at. It'd probably be Olimar, because I'm Mr. Pikmin guy. 
That's my OG Pikmin YouTube content back in the day. Um, I like Little Mac, but his aerial stuff is so trash. I like the idea of Villager pocketing things. Um, same with uh, Isabel. Um, I have loads of others, but I can't remember who's even in it. Like, don't like Corin. Don't like uh, Ryu. Don't like don't like a lot of like the the tricky ones. But I like Olimar's trickiness. When I played melee, I was a Kirby main. When I played Brawl, I don't know who I was. I was probably a Olimar main. And then when I played, yeah, you, Wii U, and Smash Ultimate, yeah, uh, a bit of everywhere. Hey man, how's your day going? Says Narco. It's going pretty all right. I uh, I have a big upgrade. I joined the hunt. Oh, I don't have it here. Well, I can show this at least. I joined the hunt this week with a bit more free time in trying to find stock for a certain thing that's out of stock. And then I did. I succeeded. I got myself a PlayStation 5, which is massive to me, not only because they're barely in stock and I just got very, very lucky, but also I haven't played an Xbox or a PlayStation game since 2010, really. I skipped PS4 and Xbox One. I played the Xbox 360, I played the old Call of Duties when I was in my Call of Duty phase when I was like 13. Then I discovered Pikmin 3 was being made and I switched to being Nintendo only. So now I've gotten this and the PlayStation Plus collection. So I've now got like 20 PlayStation 4 iconic games for free. I've got Persona 5, I've got Days Gone, I've got Bloodborne and, and Fallout 4 if I wanted that, sure. Um, God of War, I've got all these games that everyone's probably played, but I haven't. Oh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, yeah, nice. I'm pretty happy. Favorite animated series? Uh, assuming you mean like any kind of cartoon animation? Avatar The Last Airbender, without a doubt. Number one show of all time, but practically. Which do you prefer, Xbox or PlayStation? If you asked me when I was 13, I'd say Xbox, without a doubt. Way better online, it has all my friends on it. Now, I hate PlayStation. The business? Hmm. When they're like, oh, cross-platforming? Not for me. PlayStation's the only place to play games. Not a fan of that. I want cross-platform. There's not really meant to be a war anymore. That side of things, don't like PlayStation for their business ideas that we're better than everyone else and you should pay for us and screw everyone else. I don't like that. At the same time, PlayStation has all the exclusives that I care about, you know? Xbox has Halo and some indie games, which I'm not too crazy into. Whereas PlayStation has, has Persona 5. You know? It's not God of War. It's got everything else. I've already mentioned them all. So I'm into that. Don't like the business. Don't like the company as much. But they've got all the games that I actually play. So, but if I could really pick it'd be Nintendo. Even though really don't like Nintendo's decisions lately either. Everybody kind of sucks, don't they? I guess Xbox seems the most wholesome, even though they weren't a deck a deck a generation ago. It just kind of I think opinion just kind of switches. Each generation they seem to have different ideas, you know, different CEOs. I guess I'm not sure. To return to the reading thing. Have you ever read the series of unfortunate events books? Partially, I was at a doctor's once. I saw a book that said series of unfortunate events. Read the blood that said, if you're not here for unfortunate events. Don't read this. It's real depressing. It's real unfortunate. That's why it's unfortunate events. And I was like, I don't like sadness. So I put it down, never touched it. Discovered 15 years later when there was an unfortunate events trailer that it wasn't that depressing. Never watched it anyway. So I've got a memory with it in a, in a random doctor's when I was like nine. But what is your YouTube schedule? Oh, it's very simple. On a Monday and a Friday, we upload. It is at uh, 5.10 in the afternoon UK time, which is, I guess, a little confusing. Um, that's usually like the normal the normal band of time that everyone kind of uploads, right? The early streamers start, do a, uh, YouTubers, you know, they'll upload at 5 o'clock and then it will go around to like, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night. So, like that. That's how I visualize time anyway. Yeah, 1 o'clock. You know, in the afternoon, that's where the UK time is. It's normal. Uh, I personally, though, here's, here's some big brain YouTube algorithm stuff. Everybody uses schedules, right? They schedule their videos so they don't have to be there at the minute uploading, because that's, that's a kind of in whatever. They schedule it to be 
on the hour. Every time, if you had to see a visualization of all videos on YouTube being uploaded and released publicly, you would see a spike every single hour constantly, right? And a way a lot of people get views, like the way fans see their videos, is they get notifications. So what they'll do is they'll get no notifications at 3.58. No notifications saying someone's uploaded, but then at 4 o'clock, they'll suddenly get 20 notifications. And if you're unlucky enough to be that, that first notification of those 20, you are immediately buried and unseeable, right? So, the alternative is schedule another time. YouTube's other options are quarter past, half past, quarter two, and on the hour, obviously. Um, and I was thinking, all right, in theory then, quarter past is probably the best bet because then you have 45 minutes before you'll get buried by the hour slot again. And then I was thinking, well, I bet if you really think of the visualization of all these YouTube uploads, you will have a massive spike each hour and then 15, 30, 45. Each spiking anyway, you could still get buried. So I upload at 5.10 because then it's before... I don't think there's a mass. I think quarter past is probably the least used one, if I had to guess. But either way, it means also anyone watching the hour slots on average will watch about 10 minutes. They'll come back to the homepage and who's there bright, fresh and early but a classic Daz Reviews video 10 minutes past. It has worked immaculately since I started doing it like a year, a year and a half ago. Beautiful stuff. So there you go, that's my timings. Usually five o'clock, might move to six o'clock because of uh, daylight savings times. Watch, find out, be there when one comes out and like see how long ago that was. Synchronize that to your clock. It's the same time, but Mondays and Fridays, basically. Because everyone uploads Friday, Saturday time. Monday, probably the least popular day. So I, I pop up on the least vol like least popular, because then everyone, I don't have to don't have to compete with the like of Jacksepticeye. I just take their recommendations instead. I can understand the YouTube algorithm all day. I could tell you all the all the tricks I've learned from what eight and a half years guessing the system, which I ain't got a clue how on earth do Twitch recommendations work. <laughs> Give knowledge. I want to big brain my way to the top, but fast. Oof. All right. Do I do I know any other YouTuber tricks? Um. The thing is, right, uh, and I'm sure you've probably heard this before. Hey, look, it's specialist, so it's I'm, I'm going to teach you a lesson from Persona 4. YouTube, right? Nobody knows how it works. Nobody gets the algorithm. I have made it pretty well, mostly by myself. A lot of YouTubers have YouTube employees and YouTube experts that give them a little bit of insider knowledge. They still don't even know what's going on. They have their help. I don't. I have a friend who knows a YouTube expert. So that's my connection, and they occasionally tell me things. Um, I found out here's something new, something new I didn't know. Apparently, the success of other YouTubers' videos affects how successful your YouTube videos are. There's a new analytic. I won't show it, it's fine. Uh, but there's a new analytic. Oh, I can show it on my phone, maybe. There is a new analytic that you can find on like your pages that shows popular videos that your fans are also watching. Uh, I guess the idea is like to know who is related in your recommend- it's basically what I was asking earlier, what do you watch if I'm recommended to you? Um, and I was like, how do I use this? I don't- I genuinely don't know how to use this. Where would it be? Like discovery? I have no idea. Audience, maybe. Um, but it, uh, it's, it's very strange. It's a, it's a whole new section I am not used to understanding. You know, I don't think it wants to tell me on the app. Well, that's a shame, but it's a thing. Um, mine doesn't tell me much. Apparently, you guys watch food theorists and game theorists. You watch Jaden animations. You watch uh, Conoco Kitten, I think was one I saw at one point. I don't, I don't remember who they are. It's mostly like you watch Donkey. Surprise, surprise. You watch Critical. The, the the big name people. Surprise, surprise. Have many fans. Some of them are also mine. It's very strange. Odd ones out. Yeah, you see him all the time. I don't know what he do do with that information, but that's a that's a that's a thing. You can work out what that means. What I'm supposed to do with that information. 
Great. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. How do you become more personality based through your content? How do I do that? You know? Um, like I could introduce full green screen skits, but then that interrupts the content you're here for, which is a movie coverage. It's a it's a hard it's a hard trait. I wanna do more personality stuff in 2021. I've got some inklings of plans that I wanna start germinating a little bit. But like, you know, that's one of the things every YouTuber has to go through. How do you how do you live long? You know? What is the worst movie for me? The Amazing Bulk. Definitely. Just because it's green screened entirely and poorly produced to make that happen, I think. You know? Like, I've yet to see Food Fight and, uh, you know, all those kind of dreadful things. And, like, the Bone Alone video that we watched last week was pretty bad. But I, I, I think that has to take the cake, by far. I want to see more of those, to be fair. More terrible third-party green screening stuff. Am I a game producer? I'm not. I'm just, like, aware of the businessy things. I'm a YouTuber. Look me up. Daz Reviews, if you want some... The reviews of me going insane watching terrible movies I really and and uh, new things coming out they're making a Sims movie I covered that yesterday last Friday I covered home alone 6 also known as bone alone it was home Al excuse me Draco dot wave could you it dot thanks home alone 6 is a dog spin-off of home alone that's a thing so if you think you've gotten into the Christmas spirit, you ain't seen nothing yet. The Sims is getting a movie. It is. You guys gotta watch my stuff more. You gotta put notification bells on my YouTube videos. But yeah, absolutely. We have a whole series called... It was just adapted movies. Crazy. The things they're making, my dude. They're making Sims. They're making Sim City. There was rumors of a Zelda movie Netflix thing. Uh, they're making Uncharted. They're making Mortal Kombat. They're making Cuphead. There's so many things. Cover Metal Gear Solid? I plan to. I'm probably gonna do it later, like a long time later, and then people, I'll be like, remember, what? Uh, what's the name of the actor who's in it? Whatever his name is. Remember, blah blah blah's Metal Gear, new Metal Gear movie. That'll be a, a future title. Wait for it in like, February. Or something. Does anyone remember that one X-Men show from the 2000s? I don't. I wasn't a fan of X-Men as a kid. I wasn't a fan of superheroes as a kid. Apart from The Incredibles. But I hated Spider-Man. Hated Batman. Hated Superman. Hated X-Men. Didn't watch any of it. Sonic X. That was my superhero. Daz, where are you from? I'm from the UK. I'm from Britain. I was born in London and then moved about a lot. So where my accent is from, I couldn't tell you. Because um, also I picked it up. Obviously I picked it up yeah, as I went along. So... I just say all of this is Lum, uh, the UK, yeah? Like, you go up here, you're in Scotland, right? I've always lived at the southern border, all right? Like, if this was like Manchester, which is like in the center, you know, here's Wales. I've always been down here, all right? Born in London, round about here. Moved to South End on Sea, which is like over here. Like, this is like the coast, sure, right? Then, I spent like two weeks in Bristol, like over here. Went back to South End. Moved to London in several places, then moved over to Dorset in like the countryside. It was like over here, and then for university moved on over like. I have the the scale of this map's gone a bit skewed, but moved to Hampshire, and soon enough, if I'm lucky, I'll join every other YouTuber in the world. Go to Brighton. That's my that's my next plan. So that's where I'm from. That's my geographical history. You hear a little bit of a Londoner voice in me. You hear a little bit of Irish, because I had an Irish friend I hung, hung around with a lot. <clears throat> so my Irish came out a lot. What movies do you recommend to watch as a really good movie reviewer? Um, the Incredibles is really good. Avatar, not the movie, but the TV series is really good. Man, I haven't watched it good. I like the MCU. I'll tell you what, like that's... Studio Ghibli films are good. I enjoyed Nausicaa. Or, uh, I really like... Detective Pikachu. I've mentioned that a few times. Oh, yes. Uh, what are they called? What's his name? Edgar Wright Films. Shaun of the Dead. Absolutely. Scott Pilgrim. Pretty good. Um, that was the end of the world one. The Knight. The King's at the... 
Thanks for the clap. Uh, what is it? The World's End. The World's End. They're pretty good. I love... Those are probably my favourite kind of films. Edgar Wright films. You like the Sonic movie first watch, but when you watch it again, it's pretty formulaic. Yeah. Uh, Sonic movie did come off my head. It's not a bad adaptation, but it's very safe, which is... Pixar movies, yeah, I already said The Incredibles, but like Toy Story 3, Toy Story 2, Toy Story 4? Oh, Toy Story 1's pretty good too. Go on. Wally, oh. Coco, oh. There are a lot of good films. <laughs> I just don't often review them very much. Although actually, I do review Pixar films. Hey Daz, what do you think about The Mandalorian? Or are you not just, just not a Star Wars fan? I am not a Star Wars fan. I did not watch Star Wars as a kid. My mum tried to introduce me to... I, I was like, I want to watch Star Wars. So she showed me the right one. She showed me episode four first. And then was like, oh, the main guy got in a motorcycle accident. So they changed his actor. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I never watched the other ones. Turns out they didn't change the actor. He just has a, like a scar on his nose, Mark Hamill. And I didn't get into it. I watched that episode four and it didn't, didn't buzz me. Uh, I didn't watch the prequels until 2015 when I came to university. Didn't like those either because I was told I shouldn't because they're kind of bad. Watched the the new trilogy in cinemas. I liked the Force Awakens and actually I really liked the Last Jedi in the moment. I was like, wow, that was brave. It was intense. It was different. I didn't hate it as much as everyone else did. And then yeah, the last one really threw me under the bus. And I was like, maybe I'm just not into the Star Wars world. You know, I watched the Solo movie on a, on a plane. Never watched Rogue One. Never watched the Clone Wars. Um, but then I watched Mandalorian. We started watching it like two or three days ago. I really like The Mandalorian. And I think it's because it is a TV series. It actually gets to enjoy the meat of the world way better. It doesn't just skim over every species in a random bar scene with music from the cantina band playing. It's like, no, you get to talk and interact with this new species for like 20 minutes. And you really get to sink your teeth into the world building. I love... The world of Star Wars, I realize, you know? Not even not even that crazy about Baby Yoda. My girlfriend is, but I'm like it. I don't like how some of the baby sounds are stock, generic, human baby sounds that we've heard before in other things, but otherwise. But yeah, I like The Mandalorian a lot. I like the world of Star Wars. Never could appreciate it before because the movies just brushed over everything so quickly. And I love how this Mandalorian, at so far, that I'm, I'm only a... Uh, Four episodes into season one, so yeah, I'm behind. But I love how it doesn't have a laser stick. It doesn't have a lightsaber. I don't really care about the lightsabers. It's just a sword with a, with a VFX bar on it, you know? I like seeing a dude with just a blaster with all these different species. Cool guns, you know? A lightsaber is, what, like 50 years old now? Yeah. What about Lord of the Rings? Never could get into it. I've watched the whole thing and Hobbit twice, three times, three times I think, Lord of the Rings. Doesn't grip me. I like sci-fi more than I like fantasy. I like Fallout more than I like Skyrim. I just, sci-fi is my thing. He says not liking Star Wars. But I like Star Wars now, I like the world, that's I guess the fantasy sci-fi world. Magic doesn't get me as much. Didn't like Harry Potter as a kid. I'm sorry. I'm against the norm. I like Marvel. There's your mainstream thing I like, because it's kind of high fire -er. What's your opinion of Pikmin 3 Deluxe? I love that Pikmin 3 Deluxe is available on a console everyone has. Or a lot of people have. Been opening a lot of uh, eyes for a lot of people. I've got a couple friends that have gotten into Pikmin. I love that it's newly accessible to new people. I hope it succeeds. At the same time, it was awfully lazily put together. Kind of. The ultra spicy difficulty? Had no difference. They just changed the mechanics to have less Pikmin, maybe more health. Nothing changed. The co-op element didn't co didn't translate well into the gameplay at all because if you went to any cutscene, it would give all your Pikmin to one of the players because that's how it always did in the solo. Like they didn't really polish that. Uh, I like the new side missions, but they were fairly standard. They didn't do too much. They're not bad. I like how they tried to show new things with the assets they had. I liked the new guy at the end, but it wasn't much. It was just like a mini reference. It was more for new people to see. I hope it does well on that sense. But for me as a veteran, you know, Perry the Platypus is apparently my opinion.
What was the most disappointing movie you saw in 2020? It was probably, yeah, uh, Mulan. Sonic was kind of disappointing. Scoob! Oh! Scoob definitely ruined me. That was horrible. Horrible. Have I seen Kingsman? Seen Kingsman. Love it. Kind of. Love the first. Second one wasn't as good, but I'll appreciate it. It's getting all the super sequels, sure. I'll watch them all. Maybe review them. We'll see. What gaming chair do you recommend? What's a gaming chair? This is just an office chair with a pillow stuff and a pillow casing on it. A pillow... Uh, a cushion and a pillowcase, you know? Get the red and black one. Because they're all red and black. That's the boy gamer colour. <laughs> Bruh, nice. Nice chair. I know. I know. Very top quality, isn't it? <laughs> I do actually have like a fancy spinny leather chair. My girlfriend's using it. She gets the big chair in the, in the, in the front room. I get the boiler room. Have we not established this already? Like... <laughs> But otherwise, I'll be leaving it here, alright? So for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. Bye bye